Malaysia seeks to build technological collaboration in aerospace with Russia. Public universities to have OKU inclusive policy in new intake. Hello and good afternoon. You're watching News on 2 and I'm Mohammed Amin Carlos. Now, Malaysia has shown an interest to collaborate with Russia to grow its aerospace engineering technology. And according to Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamed, Malaysia is also prepared to invest in the hotel and tourism industry in a few strategic locations in Russia. In his keynote speech at the Economic East Forum, EEF 2019, in Vladivostok, Russia, Dun Dr. Mate said the organizing of international sports events such as La Tour de Langkawi and the Formula One race have helped Malaysia boost the number of tourists through the promotion of the locations involved. But in order to be interested in coming here, I believe that one of the most important, uh, important attractions will be sporting events. Uh, just now, Mr. Abe mentioned about this uh, rugby match between Russia and Japan. Now, if it is uh, to be played in this part, in Vladivostok, then I'm quite sure this will attract many Southeast Asians to come here because we too are very keen on this game. On the issue of academic collaboration, the Prime Minister also said that Russia has shown a keen interest to open an aerospace university in Malaysia. This will increase the number of international students in the country, which are now at about 100,000 students. In the forum, Tun Dr. Mate shared the stage with Russian President Vladimir Putin Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, and Mongolian President Karl Matgin Batulga. Well, meanwhile, the issue of Jammu and Kashmir was the subject of a bilateral meeting between Tun Dr. Mahathir and his Indian counterpart Narendra Modi yesterday. Well, the two leaders had discussed bilateral relations in general at a meeting held at Modi's request outside the Eastern Economic Summit in Vladivostok, Russia. Foreign Minister Dato Saifuddin Abdullah said Modi regarded Malaysia as unique Muslim country and has its own positions among Muslim countries that could explain the situation if this were to happen on any international platform. Dia kata dia, dia bercerita tentang uh, uh, kes Kashmir ini kepada uh, Malaysia kerana uh, Malaysia mempunyai kedudukan yang tersendiri di kalangan negara-negara Islam. Tanggapan saya ialah dia mungkin mengharapkan kalau timbul isu ini di mana-mana, Malaysia mungkin boleh menerangkan. Ya. Uh, tapi kita biasanya macam yang Tun Mahathir uh, jawab kepada beliau tadi, uh, kita dengan pendirian kita yang uh, lazim, maknanya isu ini adalah isu mereka, kita tak terlibat, uh, kita tak menyokong mana-mana pihak. Uh, tapi kita faham uh, isu ini harus diselesaikan dengan cara yang baik. He said this to Malaysian media in Vladivostok. Prime Minister Modi also raised the issue of Zakir Naik's extradition during his meeting with Mahathir. Tun Dr. Mahathir has safely arrived at Kansai International Airport, Osaka, at 10.05 p.m. local time, or rather 9.05 p.m. Malaysian time. Well, this is the third visit by the Prime Minister to Japan this year. The arrival of Tun Dr. Mahathir was welcomed by Deputy Foreign Minister Dato Marzuki Yahya, Malaysian Ambassador to Japan Dato Kennedy Jawan, Japan Ambassador to Malaysia, Dr. Makio Miyagawa and other embassy officials. In this visit, the Prime Minister is expected to meet Japan Bank for International Cooperation, JBIC Governor Tarashi Mehta to discuss another possible samurai bond issuance. To Dr. Mate will be conferred an honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters from Doshisha University in a special conferment ceremony. 
Film Dr. Mate will also visit Towa Corporation and Shimatsu Corporation in an effort to foster economic collaboration. The Prime Minister will also be attending a dinner with some 200 members of the Malaysian diaspora comprising students and expatriates on the second day of his visit. Well, all public universities nationwide are required to implement the Disabled Person or OKU Inclusion Policy and establish an OKU Services Unit for the 2019-2020 students' intake. Education Minister Dr. Masli Malik said the guidelines developed by the Ministry were aimed at eliminating the separation of OKU students from other students. According to Dr. Masli, the policy must be implemented by IPTAs over the next 10 years through short, medium and long-term plans that are comprehensive, practical and realistic. Speaking during the launch of the guidelines at International Islamic University, IIUM, the minister said Malaysia is capable of forming an inclusive culture in education that does not sideline the OKU community. Kita mengharapkan supaya university menjadi ruang yang inklusif untuk semua. Dan kita mengharapkan supaya selepas ini sedikit demi sedikit kita akan memastikan universiti tidak menjadi halangan untuk golongan KU hidup di dalamnya, menimba ilmu, memberikan ilmu dan juga bersama-sama membangunkan negara. Dr. Mazli said the OKU inclusion is higher education institution policy will be carried out and given priority at all higher education institutions to ensure facilities and continuous education support systems can be given to OKU students. He added among the points touched on in the guidelines are barriers in the system that discriminate against the OKU. The government has agreed to set up a special committee on the substitution of mandatory death penalties based on the decision of the cabinet on 29th August. Now, the special committee is responsible for reviewing and advising the government on alternative sentencing policy proposals as a substitute for the death penalty. In a statement today, Minister in the Prime Minister's Department, Legal, Dato Liu Vui Kiong said, with the abolition, the judge would have the discretion to impose the sentence based on the facts of the case. He added that the government has taken proactive steps and carefully set up the committee to ensure that punishment is proportional to the crime committed. This is also after taking into consideration the implications and benefits of the victim of the crime. Well, now, those who were added into a WhatsApp group spreading explicit materials can lodge a report or complaint to the Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Commission, MCMC. Well, its chairman, Al Isal Isak, said they could screen capture the group and send it to MCMC complaint WhatsApp line, adding that the investigation process would be conducted by MCMC and the Royal Police. MCMC, our framework is complaints based. So we receive complaints from uh, Orang Ramai and from the grievance uh, from the various uh, parties. Just screen capture the, the image of the WhatsApp uh, if you want to complain and send it to us via email or via WhatsApp and then we will process immediately. We've got teams running almost 24 hours a day, 7 days. He was met at a media briefing on the National Fiberization and Connectivity Plan at MCMC Cyberjaya. Al Ishsal was responding on the latest WhatsApp group formed yesterday, spreading explicit materials allegedly involving a minister. It was understood that more than 80 media practitioners and politicians were added to the WhatsApp group. Coming up next, Mata RTM set up collaboration to boost tourism industry. And the news continues. Well, Labuan Corporation will continue utilizing the Labuan Development Blueprint 2030 to further drive the island's economic growth in tandem with national development. Now, the blueprint, according to newly minted Chief Executive Officer Dr. Fari Akmal Osman, would be tailored to the island's current development needs and based on a sound understanding of the government's financial situation. Dr. Fari said the blueprint, which was launched in January last year, sets the direction for the holistic development of the duty-free island, focusing on three major areas of economic, social and physical development. 
She said they are looking at realizing the plans in the blueprint that envisions the transformation of Labuan into a smart and sustainable island city. juga uh, menjemput uh, wakil-wakil duta-duta besar yang berada di Malaysia untuk datang ke Labuan, mengenali Labuan sendiri dengan semua keunikan yang adalah uh, baik daripada segi uh, peluang pelaburan, uh, peluang pelancongan dan juga usaha kerjasama strategik yang boleh kita lakukan bersama. She also stressed that human capital development must not be sidelined and will be enhancing its tourism related programs to train more tour operators and guides. The Johor government is planning to use the domains johor.my and johorbesari.my as a platform to introduce the identity of Johor to foreign investors apart from empowering the local digital economy. State Housing, Communications and Multimedia Committee Chairman Zulkifli Ahmad said the move would be realized with the cooperation of Mainik Barat, an agency under the Communications and Multimedia Ministry, to provide the domain.my and several other related services. Ini ada peringkat, uh, masih ada peringkat uh, kelulusan kerajaan negeri uh, dan uh, saya dipahamkan setakat ini Johor Bistari kita telah pun dapat uh, kelulusan daripada uh, kerajaan dan Johor Dokmai dalam proses uh, sebab dia ada isu uh, uh, keselamatan penggunaan uh, Johor Dokmai bagi uh, kegunaan untuk agensi kerajaan kita tidak punya masalah kecuali kepada isu kegunaan bagi pihak uh, industri ataupun swasta bagi memastikan bahawa penggunaan uh, nama Johor itu uh, tidak di, uh, tidak dikaitkan dengan aktiviti-aktiviti yang tidak sihat dan seumpamanya. He was met after attending a dinner organized by Mainix to entertain 100 participants of Asia Pacific Top Level Domain Association APLTD annual general meeting in Johor Bahru. He added the move is a start to the digital economy as it would become the platform for the state to digitalize the micro industry entrepreneurs. <laughs> In our biz headline story, the strategic cooperation between RTM and the Malaysian Association of Tour and Travel Agents, MATA, will boost the promotion of tourism destinations in the country. And for the first time, RTM is opening a showroom and business-to-business -business consultation at the MATA Carnival beginning today until 8th September in PWTC. Mata President Datuk Kok Liang Tan said RTM was the right choice for the purpose of promoting attractive tourism destinations in the country as its broadcasts could reach nationwide. At the same time, making it easier for all travel agencies under Mata to negotiate and announce any travel promotion package at RTM. Uh, through the media, uh, Hasnia RTM, uh, so uh, the public consumers in America are kind of, uh, uh, there will be knowledge on uh, what are the travel trips, uh, products, uh, pada kepada uh, kegiatan kegiatan operasi uh, to operators yang tidak berlesen, and also the collaboration dengan RTM, especially in domestic, seperti tempat-tempat yang uh, belum lagi uh, dipromosikan. So with this promotion, I'm sure Mata dengan RTM akan mempergiatkan lagi uh, domestic tourism di Malaysia. He was met after the pre-launching of Mata Fair in PWTC. The initiative is one of RTM's efforts to support the tourism industry, especially in conjunction with the Visit Malaysia Year 2020. Coming up in sports, Harima Malaya, Mall Garuda in Jakarta. Well, Malaysian fans jumping for joy as Malaysia came from behind to clinch a memorable 3-2 victory against regional rivals Indonesia in the Group G of the second round of the 2022 World Cup 2023 Asian Cup qualifiers at the Gelora Bung Karno Stadium in Jakarta last night. 
Malaysia's first ever naturalized player, Mohamed Sumare, who came as a substitute, emerged the Harimau Malaya squad's hero when he scored two goals first in the 37 minutes before slotting in the winning goal in the dying minutes of added time in the second half. Indonesia's Brazilian born striker Alberto Gonçalves put the hosts ahead in the 12th minute after slotting in Sadil Ramdani's pass to beat national goalkeeper Mohamed Fariz Al Marliat. The 38 year old Mandura. United striker then once again put Indonesia into a 2-1 lead in the 39 minutes, just two minutes after Sumari's equaliser when he fired a long-range shot to beat a helpless Mohamed Farizal. The run-up to the match was already tense, but things heated up in the second half with a pitch invasion by a local fan who ran across and threw an object towards the section where Malaysian fans were seated. It happened just after Mohamed Shafiq Ahmad scored the second goal with a glancing header from Mohamed Safawi Rashid's cross in the 65th minute. The match had to be stopped for about 10 minutes to allow security teams comprising the army and the police to control the situation. At the end of the match, the Malaysian fans had to be escorted through a guarded exit lane for safety reasons. The victory saw Malaysia finally ending its 15-year winless drought at the famous stadium with a reputation of being the fortress, the Garuda squad. Malaysia last beat Indonesia in 2004 with a 2-1 victory during the first leg of the EFF Cup semi-final. Well, the Football Association of Malaysia, FAM, will lodge an official protest to the International Football Federation, FIFA, over Indonesian supporters' aggressive behaviour towards Malaysian fans during the Group G opening match last night. Now, after the happenings, Youth and Sports Minister Said Sadiq Said Abdul Rahman said gangsterism will not be tolerated in any way, adding the safety of Malaysian players and supporters is his priority. In a brief statement on his Instagram account, Said Sadiq also announced that he would make an official report to the Indonesian government and his counterpart, Indonesia's Youth and Sports Minister Imam Nahrawi, following the incident. Elaborating further, he said iron objects, bottles and flares were thrown at Malaysian supporters several times. There were also some Indonesian supporters trying to break into the Malaysian fans' area and the match had to be halted. And with that, we conclude this afternoon's edition of News On To. Now, top story, Malaysia seeks to build technological collaboration in aerospace with Russia. Well, join us again at 7 p.m. for more updates on the latest happenings here and around the world. I'm Mohamed Amin Carlos. Stay tuned to TV2 and thanks for watching.